with Brent Matting. He is the owner of 360 Farms. And Brent, your farm is cited as an agritourism place. Can you kind of tell us about 360 Farms? Well, I sure can. 360 Farms came about when my life became full circle. I grew up here and we were actually looking for something to do and elderberries kind of fell in my lap. It was kind of a no-brainer for me after a little bit of research. And elderberry is a native plant that yes, grows around here. Yes, it is. Yes, it here. is. There's a lot of exciting things going on with elderberries. There's been a lot of research done out of state, and they've actually found that some of the absolute best varieties of native elderberries originate right here in eastern Oklahoma. So why not take advantage of that? Absolutely. Now, you don't just grow elderberries. You grow some other things as well. That's right. Elderberries is our main crop, but we are, we actually, uh, some years ago, decided to start producing our own products here at the farm. And in turn, we use an aquaponics greenhouse to seasonally grow herbs that go into a lot of our different products. Aquaponics is one of those things that our a uh, middle child, our oldest son, was doing simply because he needed to start eating healthier. Okay, and he's up in the greenhouse, he so is, I'm going to go is. meet with him and talk more All about right, the aquaponics system. All Thank right, you. Sounds, sounds good. Hi, Zach. I, Hello, Casey. Nice to meet you. I hear that you are the inventor or helped with this system. I designed and uh, provided most of the labor in this installation, yeah. We've got a lot of different herbs right here that mm -hmm. you use for other for products that you make, but tell me how these plants grow. I mean, they're just growing in rock here, it looks like, but there's actually water that comes into this. Absolutely. We use local river gravel to fill these tubs, and it, for the most part, just provides a physical substrate to hold the plants upright. The nutrient actually comes from the fish waste. The fish waste is pumped through these tubes, it's dispersed throughout the gravel and the plants are able to take up what nutrients they need. They clean the water so that the fish can live in a healthy environment and the fish provide the nutrients so the plants can be healthy. So it's a symbiotic relationship and we've got the water that's coming in right here into each one of these tanks. Absolutely. And then it's got a valve on it or can you kind of explain so these don't overflow? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you'll see here with the soft flexible line there's a continuous flow of water. 24 hours a day that's flowing in. In the center is what we call a bell siphon. This is a technology commonly used in uh, sewage drain fields and other agricultural process processes. But the bell siphon has no moving parts. It simply triggers when the water level reaches a certain height and it drains rapidly into the tank below. So with no moving parts, we're able to provide continuous flowing water and a variable water height so that the roots aren't constantly submerged, but they do stay wet and are able to provide the nutrients that's in the water. And because of that, you actually have the red wiggler worms in here. So you've got some vermicomposting going on too. Absolutely. Rather than trying to keep up with cleaning the gravel, we just allow nature to do what nature does. We modeled this system after river systems that exist in most forests and mountain ranges. So with the constantly flowing water and the worms pro processing the fish waste, a lot of the micronutrients and bioavailable compounds that benefit plants are present in the system without us going outside to bring in synthetic nutrients. Right. So we, we've got several tanks here. There are 75 growing beds here. Okay. All right. So where are the fish? The fish are below. We would call this the sump. Okay. There are uh, several hundred koi throughout the system. We have five rows of grow beds, each stacked over a sump. The koi we got is just small fingerlings from a local koi farmer. They're doing well. <laughs> they, they do. They thrive well. The water stays well oxygenated because of the constantly flowing water, just like it would in a rapidly flowing river. And, you know, we feed them regularly, and they have everything that they need. So you're growing year-round in here. I mean, it's hot in here. We're both Absolutely. sweaty. Absolutely. So how are these plants doing? You've got a few fans in here, but mm -hmm. you don't provide any sort of cooling or heat in the wintertime. Absolutely. Well, this system was designed to be as low maintenance as possible. That means keeping the systems as simple as possible. So when we dug these sumps, we dug a couple of feet down into the earth. Most of the water volume is actually con contained below the level of the soil. That means that the water closely matches the temperature of the surrounding ground at all times. So in this case, in the winter, our water rarely dips below 55 degrees. In the summer, it rarely gets above 80 degrees. And 55 to 80 degrees is a tolerable range for the root zone in most plants. The growth cycle of plants is typically triggered by the temperature of the root zone more so than the temperature of the leaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, in nature, the leaves are 
uh, tolerate variable temperatures better because of changing sunlight conditions and that sort of thing. But if you can keep the roots at a nice steady temperature, they'll grow year round. And that's what this system does for us by being tied to the thermal effect of the deeper earth. We don't cool or heat our water and we're able to produce year round. So it seems like a very efficient system that you have here. And are you able to grow pretty much anything you would grow outside? We really haven't found any plants that just fail to produce. Um, definitely some plants do better in an aquaponic system than others. Root crops can be a little bit of a challenge because they grow in the gravel rather than in soil like they traditionally would. But we have grown several root crops well. Um, our carrots come out absolutely delicious and uh, radishes are a favorite as well. The best plants for these types of systems are what you would call an herbaceous plant. That means they, they pr primarily produce leafy greens. Okay. Plants that need to flower do respond better with a little more climate control than we have in here. Mm -hmm. But seasonally we can move flowering plants through the greenhouse. Year round we can produce the herbaceous plants as, you know, as quickly as we can keep up with them. All right, so the fish are feeding the plants. Can mm -hmm. I feed the fish? Absolutely. <laughs> Let them come say hi. Perfect. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.